COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a justifiable sense of unprecedented urgency and emergency in the mobilization of global resources towards human safety. Yet the sense of urgency with which we are engaging with the immediacy of COVID-19 pandemic can obscure the endemic social vulnerability occasioned by unpeaceful, unjust, and weak institutions at the global, state, and local levels. For a long time, the global family had assumed a pseudo-immunity towards structural violence and unjust structures, as proposed in SDG number 16. Yet, COVID-19 has now made it clear that there is a strong correlation between SDG number 16, COVID-19, which is within SDG number 3, and food security, which is SDG number 2. It is not just about the numbers 16, 19, 2, and 3. It is rather about people, the human family, who are simultaneously co-present as dignified global and local citizens, that is, global citizens. There is therefore a need for both a nexus and a nested thinking in our efforts to flatten the curves of both the COVID-19 and structural violence. Just like the wet markets in Wuhan have had devastating impact on the stock markets in New York, so too can the cow markets in Garimara Mission in Isiolo in Kenya have a debilitating and spiraling impact on the global stock markets. I am not trying to draw a false equivalence between a wet market scenario in Wuhan and Garamera Mission in Kenya. All I am laboring to underscore is the urgency of treating the vulnerable pastoralist communities in the far-off peripheries of Garamera in Isiolo, Kenya, with the same dignity and as equitably as CEOs of New York and London stock markets. This may look abnormal at first sight, but abnormality, both as a concept and a thinking process, is, is what COVID-19 has now introduced us to as the new normal. COVID-19 pandemic has become the ultimate equalizer by revealing yet again that Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK and our catechist in Garamera Mission, Mama Francisca Payani, are after all just simply human and vulnerable in multiple ways. The most sustainable way of equally safeguarding their well-being, the economic, geographical, and status differentials notwithstanding, is by collaborating in a sustained, purposeful, and strategic reconstruction of the weak and unjust institutions and structures proper to their contexts. Meanwhile, the pastoralist community in Isiolo are still trying to grapple with the new reality that has been brought into their manatas, that is, the traditional mud huts and grazing zones, courtesy of COVID-19 pandemic. The people who have for a long time longed to see the government's institutional presence through service delivery are now seeing them crisscrossing their inaccessible roads. They are struggling to understand why the government is interfering with the only capital that they are left with, that is, the social capital, by insisting on social distancing. They don't seem to understand why the rest of the country are bitterly complaining about isolation, while they, for a long time, have been silently living in economic and developmental isolation. They marvel at how the government can quickly establish a robust, rapid response team to identify, trace, and track potential coronavirus contacts. Yet, they have struggled to identify, trace, and track the source of both structural and protected violence in their midst. 
the urban middle-class families who they had for a long time looked up to as bringers of development and now seen as bringers of coronavirus and a cohort to be avoided. Yet, the urban dwellers are also the bringers of food, which means that again, the pastoralists are vulnerable to hunger and food insecurity. We cannot but refocus on the building of strong peace infrastructures. This will include just and strong institutions. We, as a global citizenry, must realize that we are as vulnerable and dispensable as the vulnerable demographies within and around us. For durable peace, both curves must be fulfilled.